Hey guys, I'll be showing you guys how to make your advanced rogue lineage trinket system. And this is a concept from Rogue Lineage, so I, uh, the idea came from Rogue, and I don't take uh, credit for the idea, but all I did was recreate it. So here, we're going to start right into it. So we're going to get right into it. So the first thing we want to do here is that we want to get our, our four items that, we were, that we're going to be using here. So we're going to be using a diamond, an opal, a scroll, and a goblet. And then inside of here, we want to make a folder inside of Albuquerque Storage, and we want to move all of these inside of the folder. I'll put inside the workspace so I can just display how it's going to look like to you guys. So I'm going to delete this, just so that we don't need this anymore. So inside this trinket locations in here, if I click on this, it shows all locations. So every location here is going to, it's eight parts in here. I named it part one through eight. And every location in here is going to show us where every trinket is going to spawn. So we can have like an opal right here, a scroll, a diamond, and like two, three goblets because it's going to be pretty common. And every time we click on it, we're going to get silver for that. So if you add more locations and move it around, I guarantee you a trinket will spawn there because of because of how optimized the script is, at, how optimized the script is. So the more uh, locations you add into this trinket locations is how many more... Uh, how many more um, trinkets will spawn there and it, uh, trinkets, it, the trinkets do not despawn unless you click on them. So um, that's one thing. And then the next important thing is that we're going to add, uh, we're going to go to our value script here. And now we're going to do game.players.players add a connect function player. So we just add, uh, so we're just detecting every time the player uh, joins the game, every time the player is added. We're going to uh, create an int value uh, using instance.new and we're going to parent it to the player. We're gonna change that. We're gonna make this uh, the value equal to zero. It's already default zero, so you can just remove this or keep it here just to show you that's gonna be equal to zero. And now we're gonna do silver dot name equal to silver, so we can tell that it's our silver value. And now we're gonna get into the, the more the, 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 the easiest part of the script right now. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do silver display. We're gonna make our screen GUI, and then we're gonna add a frame into it. And inside this frame, you wanna make the background. Uh, you wanna make the background transparent so you can't see the background. And you can place whatever you want. You can put it on the top, you can put it in the middle, wherever you feel like it should be. But I just put it on the bottom left. And now we're going to make our, our text label. And inside the text label, we're gonna, all I did was I just scaled the text. So I scaled the text here. I made it equal to true. So if I got rid of this, it's going to be like be like that. If I scale it, it's going to go come up. And then after that, that's all I did. I just uh, you can, I can just change the name, whatever I want. It does, the name doesn't matter outside of the uh, uh, Roblox Studio. When you go in the script, it's going to change. So inside of here, what we're going to do here. We're gonna do game. Are we gonna do our players? Are we gonna look at the players? And then we're gonna look at the silver. So we're gonna do player wait for child silver. So inside of here we're gonna do player, and now we're gonna wait for child silver. And now we're, uh, so now we locate the uh, the silver. And now we're gonna look at our text label, right? So all we do is just locate our text label. So script dot parent dot frame dot text label. Simple like that. Straight, super straightforward. Now we're gonna uh, make our function called change. And now every time this function is fired, it's gonna fire every time the silver value increases or decreases so all we did in here we did uh, uh text label dot text equals and now we're going to concatenate it so it looks nice we're going to do we're going to write silver semicolon and we're going to put space in front of it then we're going to uh, close out uh the the text the little text speech we had right here the little text label now we're going to put dot dot silver dot value so what is going to be here is basically going to split like this so we're going to do silver and let's say we get five silver it's going to be like this let's say we increase our silver so like two three, four, five, and, and etc. And now every time the silver is changed, we're going to connect that we're going to fire this function here. So we're not using a while wait here because while wait would be too inconsistent. And this would be the most, the best way for you to honestly do this. So this is a, a amazing way for you to learn off of. So I hope you guys understand this part super easily. And now we're going to get to the more complex part of the whole entire script. So making the trinket spawn. 
So inside of the script, we have, I, I um, Striker labeled it for you guys so you guys can understand what he was doing because we both made the script. And he wanted, um, so he wanted to feel more engaging with the video. So instead he put some comments inside of the script so we can help you guys understand it more. So when you guys go and try to look at the script for yourselves, you can understand why we are doing what we're doing. If you ever like, if you ever lose, if you ever want to understand what is like, what is going on in this script or what is this line doing, you can just come back to here and just check uh, and just look at the, uh, the comments that Striker made and it'll help you guys out. Because, uh, X, X scripting is severe in Striker scripting, if you didn't know. So now we're going to make our variables. We're going to make item in game zero. We're going to make our duration five. So how long uh, it's going to take before uh, they respawn. We're going to make our max item in game equal to eight. So uh, depending on how many uh, uh, lo item locations is going to be how many uh, max items is going to be in the game. Now we're going to locate replicate storage and we're going we're to locate our money items. So our money items is going to be our um, is going to be our diamond, our scroll, our goblin, and our opal. And now we're going to get our trinket location. We're going to do trinket location equals game dot workspace dot trinket locations. Now we're gonna do local replicate storage equals game get serious replicate storage. And now we're gonna now we're gonna make our debounce. And now he put debounce for spawning. So basically we can make sure if it can spawn or if it cannot spawn. And now we're gonna do and now we're gonna locate our money items. So money items right here. Uh so we locate I think we see, we see it we locate it twice, so and anything is fine. Uh but you can just remove this. Uh it's still it's still looking uh the same thing, so you can just remove this line here. But I'm just gonna keep it here just because it works fine still. So um so um for a table for a chance of spawning a trinket. So this is gonna be a table for how like what percentage each item inside our, our money our inside of our money items dot like diamond scroll and goblet get. So we made our scroll have a five percent chance of spawning. So it's gonna be super rare. Now we're gonna have our diamond have a ten percent chance of spawning. And now we're gonna have our opal have a 35 percent chance of spawning. We have our goblet having a fifty percent chance of spawning. So our goblet is the most common is our is our most common item that we're gonna see spawn. So if we do if we do see a scroll spawn if we do see a scroll spawn we're gonna be pretty lucky. And now inside of here we're gonna make our trinket total, and you'll see we'll see after uh, when we get deep to the script while we're doing this. And now we're gonna loop through the trinket table. Then we're gonna do trinket uh, trinket total equals trinket total plus v. So all we're gonna be doing we're gonna be adding the value inside of this trinket table uh, to the trinket total. And now we're gonna make our table is gonna call it's gonna be called available pause. I'm just gonna say position just to not confuse you. So available position. So basically, by just by the name of the table, we can indicate that it's gonna show us how many available positions we can go to or use so our trinket can spawn there. And now all what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do four IV in pairs. We're gonna do trinket locations get children. So now we're gonna be looping through our locations. Now we're gonna do available position and we're gonna do the number of available positions plus one equals the value so v so part one two three four and five so part one is going to be equal to the amount of uh items on the table plus one hopefully this doesn't confuse you because this this can be a little bit confusing to like new scripters but i hope you understand it uh and then we're going to uh, pick a random trinket based on their weight so now we're going to create a function we're going to call a spin spin trinket now we're going to make our now we're going to make our variable called rad rand and then we're gonna do math.random. So when we just do math.random, we get values like 0 0.4, 0 0.9, 0. Point et cetera, right? And now we're gonna multiply that by our trigger total. And remember, we added uh, our trigger total is gonna to be equal to these values on the table because we looped through the table and we added the values to the trinket total. And now we're gonna make our um now we're gonna make our, our local variable and we're gonna uh, name it add, we're gonna make it equal to zero. Now we're gonna do for IV and pairs, trinket table do. If rad is greater than add, so if uh, let's say we get like I don't know, just if rad. So I don't know what number you would get from this, but I just know it would work. So let's say uh, if rad is is greater than add, and rad is less than or equal to, is less than or equal to v plus add. So whatever the value is, so v v inside of uh, this trinket table right here. So let's say like. Five, so if 50 plus add and this is bigger than this random value that, that generates here then we're gonna return I and when it returns I we're gonna be getting the scroll diamond opal or goblet opal or goblet yep so that's when we return I then we're gonna do else we're gonna do add else if, if it doesn't if this does not pass we're just gonna we're just gonna add V to add so let's say we, uh let's say we have a chance we get the goblet all we're gonna do we're gonna add 50 to add so 50 is gonna be equal to add and then we're gonna return. Uh, then we're gonna return our spin trinket, and then boom, simple. Now we uh, return our little function, so it's gonna fire. 
Uh, so now what we're gonna do here, now we're gonna actually start like creating the trinket. So this is where we get into the more of the complex part. So now we're gonna do if items in game is greater than or equal to eight or debs, then return end. So basically we're starting our debunk and we're just making sure that the items in game is eight. So now we're gonna set it equal to true. And now we're gonna do, now we're gonna uh, clone. We're gonna fire our function here. So basically I remember I is gonna be equal to the dime, the scroll, the opal, because that's our little chance system. And now we're gonna clone it so we can have more than one. So clones are randomly picked trinket. And now we're gonna do local pick equals math.random. And then we're gonna uh, randomize it uh, through the amount of values that are inside of the uh, available position table. And now what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do local uh, position. So I'm just gonna say pause position, whatever you wanna say. I'm just gonna say position. We're gonna do uh, available pick. And now it gets the part that has the position. So basically part one, two, three, four, and five. And all the way down to eight. So now what we're gonna do here, now we're gonna remove it. Now we're gonna remove this pick from the uh, the table. And now uh, uh, super, uh, super straightforward. And now we're gonna make our array. And in this array, we're gonna make sure that every time a trinket spawns, it's gonna spawn on the ground and it doesn't spawn in the air. And now if not trinket array, then return end. So if, the, if it cannot find the array, then the trinket will not spawn. So it's gonna go all the way back up. And now we're gonna set our now we're gonna set our new item. So basically our trinket. So let's say we have the goblet position, the trinket uh, trinket ray dot position. So now we're gonna uh, set the position of the trinket to the ray, so it can go on the like the base plate or whatever is like the closest to the whatever the bottom ray is pointing at. Basically, now we're gonna pair it to the workspace so we can actually see it inside of the workspace. So now it's, it's not gonna be inside of the storage no more. And now we're gonna do items in game plus equals one. So basically what we're doing this, so we can indicate how many times, uh, so we can indicate how many times uh, an item is being added to the game. So we can tell, okay, we have this many items inside the game. This is too much, remove one, or make sure we can stop the script here because we have too much items in the game. And now, so a very important part of this script that uh, I forgot to mention in the beginning, that you want to add click detectors to all of these, all of your money items folder. So diamond, we have a click detector. Scroll, we have a click detector. Gobble, we have a click detector. And opal, we have a click detector. And what we're doing here, we're not, and some people would usually, uh, what most optimized, unoptimized scripts will usually add a script inside of here. And every time they click on it, they get like, uh, they get like five silver or something. But the way we're, be, the way we're going to be doing it is going to be super, it's super advanced and more optimized. So, don't forget to add a click detector to all your uh, your, uh, your items inside your money items folder. And we're gonna do in here we're gonna do new item dot click detector so the click detector and, and if whatever item it calls dot mouse click connect function player. So now we're gonna fire players. So we can actually give them the money. Now we're gonna do items in game minus equals one. So we're gonna remove one. So basically when we click on it, the item is gonna remove from the game and it's gonna give us our silver. Now we're gonna do available position. Uh, and then we're gonna do the amount of uh. Items that are inside this folder plus one equals position. So now we're just going to re-add a position to available position table. And now we're going to do new item destroy. And now we're going to, uh, all we're doing, we're, destroy, we're destroying the trinket. And now we're going to do uh, player.silver.value equals player.silver.value plus five. So all we're doing, we're just adding five to the player's current silver value. And now we're going to wait the duration to whatever duration is up here. So our duration is five. So we're going to wait five seconds. Uh, and now we're gonna do if items in game. So in this uh, uh, small section here, we're just gonna make sure that the um, that we have a certain amount of items inside a game, so it doesn't like over, so it doesn't like go past eight, because that's how many locations we have. So if items in game is less than max items, then uh, then we're gonna do for i so for for i equals one, and then max items minus so basically our eight how many um, items inside a trinket location. So max items minus item in game do. So it's gonna uh, repeat depending on how many like items are in the game. So let's say we have like two in here, we're gonna do eight minus two, we're gonna get six, so it's gonna loop six times. So if not, uh, create new item. So whenever, so uh, checks whenever the creation of the trinket was successful. Now we're gonna wait the duration, that'll be five. And now what we're gonna do here, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna end it off here. Then we're not, we uh, optimize it so we can actually check that our trinket is, uh, that's not gonna pass eight. So now we're gonna do. We're just gonna wait the duration. So it's so uh, every single time this script is run, it's gonna uh, wait five seconds before it runs again. So it's like a time frame between the trinket spawning. Then we're gonna set our debounce equal to false, and then we're gonna return true. And now inside of here, we're gonna do while items in game is less than max items do. Now we're gonna now it's gonna say uh, just for the start to get the max item. That's what the striker's comment. 
Now, all we're going to do here, we're going to fire our function here. So everything we did here, we're going to fire it here. And then we're going to wait. So it just, so it, just to make sure that uh, it doesn't uh, break the script because you, you don't want our, our script breaking. That's basically how you're going to be making your uh, your advanced trinket system. If you have any questions, uh, I'd love to help it out. Join our Discord. If you uh, if you want to like and subscribe, if you think this really helped you out in scripting, uh, leave a like, comment, anything you want to say. Uh, I hope you have an amazing day. Uh, peace out.